Hello, and welcome to American Amnesia. I'm Cliff Garner, your host. Uh, yeah, just a couple kind of quick things today, I think. Uh, I'm trying mostly to stay in the habit of getting getting over to uh, recording something every couple days. Uh, but I've I, uh, been cleaning my room out, and I found a couple things I thought that were pretty key. And uh, these were things that I used to uh, uh, talk quite often about on my show. Uh, back in uh, uh, the early 2000s when I first started doing all this. Uh, and uh, well, one of them, I found this book. It's called up here, Culture War with a question mark. And the subtitle is the, uh, the Myth of a Polarized America. And basically the thesis is that... Uh, Americans are not as divided as the two-party system would like us to believe. And I've always noticed that. Uh, I turned against the two-party system a long time ago, and I haven't seen any uh, good reason to support it. I don't particularly care for it. Uh, I think this bipolarity <laughs> uh, has been... Uh, been uh, bad for the country and I think it's been bad for people in general uh, I think a lot of people uh, misunderstand my position by uh, confusing me with themselves I'm not in favor of the two-party system I've never liked it I well maybe I shouldn't say never uh, when I was a kid and I uh, worked for the Democratic Party in 1972 uh, trying to get uh, uh, George McGovern elected, uh, I uh, I actually kind of thought pretty highly of the two-party system. But by the time I graduated high school, I had uh, come to the conclusion that it was a, uh, a very poor thing indeed. Um, I, uh, I I leaned more towards the Democrats uh, through high school and. Uh, immediately thereafter, and uh, later on, I fell off the spectrum somewhere uh, back Perot, and, uh, and I, I became more conservative uh, in uh, 2000, uh, and uh, I actually voted for uh, uh, Bush. Uh, but uh, by the time Obama had uh, come up, I really kind of went against the uh, two-party system again. Uh, the, the, those the, it's complex reasons on all that and it's not as simplistic as it sounds but the two-party system has not been something that I've rather favored uh, I just uh, went along with it only a couple times in my whole life uh, basically I've been a third-party person uh, and and I uh, really had no intention of voting for Trump and originally I was uh, going to vote for Gary Johnson in the libertarians but he blew it with, uh, well, with the Aleppo comment. Uh, his, his being stoned all the time didn't make me feel very good. But uh, the clincher for me was uh, him wavering on the TPP one time too many. And that was something that I definitely um, did not want to see uh, enacted. And uh, that was the clincher. Uh, I, Jill Stein's economics uh, turned me off, but uh, other than that, I, I actually respect the lady. Uh, and uh, I, I do have a fairly decent opinion of her on the whole. Uh, although, I, 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 like I say, the economics of the Greens and uh, some of their SJW tendencies and the politically correct nonsense, uh, that, that uh, keeps me from joining the camp, but... Uh, but I do have a, a reasonably good opinion of the of the of the Greens on the whole, although uh, I I wouldn't um, vote for them myself. Well, maybe well maybe individuals, but uh, uh, but I not not for president, and uh, they they don't get my final imprimatur uh, as it were. So I, I uh, at any rate, the, this culture war, though, um, actually puts things in the center. And that's kind of where my politics have been, really. 
I don't necessarily subscribe to some kind of, a, oh, how would you put it, a, a purist form of a libertarianism. I, I, uh, I never really got into Ayn Rand. Uh, in fact, I, I don't think I've ever read any of her books. Uh, though they've been recommended to, uh, to me by friends for many, many years. And I do have a lot of leanings towards uh, uh, libertarian types of ideas. But at the same time, I'm not necessarily uh, on board with uh, everything. Uh, it, philosophically, okay, it's satisfying. But uh, there, there are points of... Uh, the philosophy that actually kind of get hung up on a real world uh, um, coral reefs, you know, that pierce the bottom of the boat there. But the uh, thing about the culture war is that this uh, this diagram is something I have referred to quite often, and I'll try to try to get a. A copy of this that you can see very well. But you can see the top one is a trough. And it has two high points on either end. This is the inverse of the uh, regular bell curve, as you can see on the bottom. The bell curve, uh, as you notice, in the middle, it has the peak. It comes to the top. And on the extremes, it's lower. That is the real statistical uh, breakdown, really, of almost everything in life. But the political parties, the two parties, would have us believe this top is really where it is. Now, because it is a two-party system that's meant to divide us into two separate ways that are uh, somehow mutually exclusive to each other. That because of that, there is a divide that has been created by that. And, and in my opinion, I would maintain that this divide is mostly rhetorical as opposed to actual. And that the people actually don't necessarily disagree on most things but they do come to that point of mis disagreement because of the two parties pulling in separate directions and they are not only doing that but they're pulling us apart in reference to the other that the 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 two parties feed on each other and that by their basically their collaboration in this this effort that they have uh, successfully gotten people to think in two two separate means or two ways and that uh, that the uh, crossing that uh, gulf that that trough in the middle becomes difficult and the reason it is difficult is because it, rhetorically you have to change the programming that goes under, I shouldn't say the program, uh, the form, the formatting of uh, thought and uh, jargon and buzzwords um, prevents a person from just easily changing their thinking overnight. It isn't like that you've been convinced of an argument necessarily. And they're trying to make sure that there is less argument, period. That, uh, that is a, um, I think on their part, I think that is very short-sighted and it also sells people short. That the, that the native intelligence of most people exceeds this limitation although it does take effort to do so and I think that 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 uh, that's really kind of where we we've come at this point in time um, that 
the media has decided to play its role, but it has also become a, a very partisan part of the whole game. And because it has done that, it violated its own rules of uh, trying to present itself as at least somewhat objective. Uh, and, and it had managed to do that actually fairly well until towards the end of the uh, Bush administration, in which point it uh, really kind of came unhinged on Bush, and maybe to some extent it was deserved. Uh, certainly for the, economy, for the economy, it was uh, definitely a, a very bad uh, way to leave things, and, uh, and uh, so it... it there was a deserving of a certain amount of it anyway. But the thing is, is the vituperation that had gone with that. And the open adulation uh, of uh, Obama told it so far away from any form of, uh, or even semblance of object, objectivity that I think that they had uh, kind of doomed themselves and that they're no, there's no going back now. The mainstream media has, has damned itself, basically. And they're, they're trying to go after Trump, and I, I don't think they're going to succeed for one thing. For another, people, the cat's out of the bag and people know what they're doing. They, they tip their hand way too far with Obama and... Uh, and now they're stuck with the results of that. And these consequences are something that I think that they're rather afraid to face. Uh, so what, what you have, really, is that there is a middle that is reforming again. And it really has nothing to do with Trump. It, it, it's, it's been happening on its own. This has been a process that's been coming for quite a time now. And that this is where we get into the what, what I'm calling the new paradigm. And the, these forces are kind of coming together and realigning themselves in such a way that I think that it's actually becoming, uh, I love to say it, a kind of a radical center in which people come to a point of... Uh, of uh, of agreement uh, that there's a uh, what do you call it uh, um, well I don't want to say congregation but but they come together in the middle someplace uh, consensus that's the word there, 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 there's this consensus that is uh, that is coming together with the people and in fact from both parties uh, and in fact not just both parties but people that have been alienated for a long time these people are coming out of the woodwork and actually actually saying that maybe that there's some chance of, of real change a lot of people just like uh, on their jobs have given up and it's about time that they came out of the woodworks so uh, there, there's a lot of good people that uh, really can still contribute that, that need to be there. And that, uh, that I think, is a very positive thing. In fact, this is a positive energy that, uh, that's coming together. It's not negative, even. It, it, uh, it, it's going in a direction, and, it, and it's coming together. It's kind of like uh, solidifying. So what... What I'm saying is, is that 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 this uh, this book, Culture War: The Myth of the Polarized America, I believe is proving itself correct. Now, the the material in in it of itself, uh, the statistics and everything else, those are a little dated. Uh, it was from 2005. It was uh, it was still during the Bush days, but it was after the second uh, the re-election of Bush. And it did show that, that, that there was this consensus that was in between the, the two parties um, that was in existence then. I don't think that Obama changed that all that much. Uh, he came out with the ideas of hope and change, and, you know, things a little bit to the left. But it, 
wasn't that that drastic. Uh, a lot of people went after him because he represented something that, that could have been actually quite good. Um, had he... Had he not deliberately forced the the Republicans out the door and beat them on the head when they didn't go along with everything that he said, I think he could have been a unifier. But even then, he could have at least had um, put himself in the position of uh, as an authority especially on things like race relations, where he, he really had a natural uh, advantage, that he could have really achieved quite a bit. In, in fact, had he done so on that, that thing alone, he would have had a, 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 um, a legacy that would be worth talking about. But he didn't do that. He ran away from that. He put everything on the so-called... the. Uh, progressive things, uh, the these uh, the the, the health care uh, bill, which uh, really isn't just health care. I mean, it's uh, it, it well, it isn't even health care. It's insurance, for Christ's sake. Um, insurance is only a part of the whole issue, and uh, and and one that is, in my opinion, a total. Uh, uh, the version from uh, the main issue of cost. Um, and, and accessibility. I mean, you know, those those are the two key things of people getting taken care of. And uh, he, he didn't really improve anything. So at any rate, uh, but, but his, his, his going after these other uh, gold rings, you know, and and they weren't lasting, and and then all the wars, and then uh, the all the corruption that nobody wants to even look at. Uh, you know the, the the and the kid gloves with which he was treated by the press uh, that even works against him because there was no there was no there was no friction there there was no uh, anything to start a fire with. Uh, he he slid in, he slid out. I mean, you, that's the way you're going to operate, then uh, you don't deserve to be remembered. But at any rate, this this change has come, and and it was it was anticipated for him. Could have been his. Could have been his to uh, uh, guide in the way he wanted to. And if, if it would have came out further on the left, that would have been fine too. I think uh, had he done it correctly. What he needed to do was not pull the people apart, rather, but was to unify them. And by going to the center to unify them, he would have actually had a totally different approach than the one he took. He chose to pull us another direction and, and yank people apart. That was his decision. And because that was, he ended up being just another politician. Uh, another book I found as I was cleaning around is this one here and this is uh i think one of the most remarkable books that uh i've ever read uh this was uh, written in 1995 it's uh, called the revolt of the elites and and the betrayal of democracy it's by a fellow named christopher lash lash died in 1994 and this book was released posthumously and this material remains almost almost uh, completely valid now because the the way things turned out this book is is dated this culture wars is dated and the reason why is because it really was more specific to a time period although it did describe certain things that remain valid today uh, especially the, with the uh, the center convergence, uh, that uh, I think uh, it, it does remain valid uh, and completely. Uh, but but like I say, a lot of the other information is dated. In this book, that's not the case. 
And and the reason is because instead of uh, instead of bringing about the change that was necessary to to reassert a uh, consensus with the uh, from the center in America, bringing people together as opposed to tearing them apart as they have been for for decades, that. Uh, that a lot of the situations with the the elites that have risen up over the over the decades uh, in the breach of uh, the old money people uh, dying off and being succeeded by people that are really just more concerned with uh, the money itself without any sense of uh, social responsibility uh, that that this has created a situation in which the uh, elite people, the people who basically have been the shadow government, but also the uh, the investors, the uh, movers and shakers, the economic powerhouses in this country, have gone from uh, seeing this country as something worth preserving and democracy itself as a means to... Um, rule the country really but but it the respect towards the common person has de, been devalued so far that that the elites from the two parties have divorced themselves from direct contact with the people and one of the symptoms of that came with uh, papa bush uh, not uh, understanding uh, the, uh, uh, well, checking out at a grocery store, you know, with a scanner. Uh, that this is this kind of disconnect w is symptomatic of the the differentiation between the elite and the common person now, and 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 that was uh, an emblem, particularly of the wealthy, but the managerial class that rose up in the corporate uh, uh, environment you know you could read Peter Drucker and uh, uh, in his uh, his ideas well well they permeated uh, uh, the political um, environment of both parties and that this corporatism um, came up in place of a more democratic um, type of uh, methodology, I, I, well, business method, business uh, philosophy, and that uh, you really saw more of a top-down and uh, the middle management um, is kind of emerging as a uh, as a force. Uh, but you know, there, 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 this is definitely an anti-democratic. Uh, uh, trend and this trend had, has infected both parties and this is something that Lash had noticed and he had uh, spelled out the, uh, the, the alienation between uh, the people and the system that the elites uh, had uh, decided to impose upon the people uh, that they were using basically what were um, uh, well, well, the republic is is has a democratic uh, component, and that that democratic component, uh, uh, basically the uh, the effect of uh, voting, was to be more or less dismantled by the two parties, uh, in order to allow the people who know the experts, the professionals, to take, take the reins and to rule without uh, a hindrance from those who don't know, the unwashed masses who uh, increasingly um, were, were no longer being given the services they had paid for nor were supplied with uh, the means to 
continue to live independently. So the the thing is um, a monster. I, I I can't really think of any other word for it that uh, has grown from uh, both a um, not very beneficent um, disdain for uh, a common person. I mean, it's really very uh, nasty and insulting. But also from the sheer greed uh, financially and for power and uh, really for all kinds of other things in which these ivory towered professionals and a handful of their favored servants who live in their gated communities and uh, just leave the rest of us outside uh, in a place of uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth as it were that uh that situation is untenable. And the reason it is untenable is because the, the people have finally found their mouths. And they've also finally... They, I think they've seen through it for a while now. But they've... Like I say, with Obama, they wanted to give him a chance. I, I think that was fair. I, and, uh, the second term, I don't think he deserved, but... Uh, you know, you, you look at the alternative, you know, you, you, <laughs> the master and the slave, and uh, we chose the slave, and that's really the way it is. Uh, you had, uh, what's his name, the big banker of the hedge fund, and then the Obama who bootlicked all those guys. Either we were going to get it directly right out of the out of the horse's mouth, or we were going to get it translated. Well, we decided that we wanted it translated through somebody that at least gave us the excuse that we didn't know. This this um, need to um, deny the culpability. And to live in an alternative universe in which uh, we aren't accountable for what has happened to us. Uh, this, is, this has got to come to an end. It, it, free people are responsible. And we need to take that back. And uh, that, that's got to be done. Uh, we, we only put off the inevitable when we retreat into that little safe space that uh, the left has actually coveted it created and coveted and thinks is uh, uh, worthwhile so they go screeching off and screaming <laughs> because they can't stand the reality what nonsense what nonsense